in um, this video, I'll be looking at um, another aspect cost. So while in network cost, we calculate the cost along a network path. In this video, what I'll be doing is that I will um, be calculating a cost travel that um, can follow network. It will be faster if we go by rail, um, a bit slower if we go by car on the roads, a bit slower if we walk and there's no roads, and even a bit slower if we swim where there's no land. So basically a more flexible cost approach um, than the one that we used in the network. But it also has its drawbacks, but let's see. So um, if we um, look at how our QGIS, um, so this time it's our usual suspects. So um, our natural earth data set of our European countries. This time I have also included the railroads as earlier and as something new, the road network. You can see there's also ferries in both railroad and in, um, in, in the road network. So what we want to do is that we want to look at um, how um, Basically, let's uh, see how long time it takes to get from anywhere to Prague. Um, so, approximately, somewhere around here. Um, and we then have to do some extra small calculations. First of all, what we want to do is that we want to convert all of this to raster, where we, in our raster layers, specify a price. So, the idea is that when I convert the land, I set the walking price where there's land and the swimming price where there is um, no land. When there's railroads, I will set a railroad price and a really high price outside the railroad. And when there is a road, I will set a price for the road, no sir, and a high price outside. What I do afterwards is then I will take the lowest price for any cell. I'll create a raster where all of the small square, where let's say one by one kilometer, and when it that one kilometer, I would set a price for walking. Let's say um, if they're one kilometers, it will take us uh, woo, let's say ten minutes to walk one kilometer. If um, it's out in the sea, let's say it will take us well. Um, 200 minutes. It takes a long time to swim long distance in sea. I have no idea. We won't do that. Um, if there is a railroad, I will set, let's say a railroad can train to go 100 kilometers an hour, as I did in the network. So that will be uh, 0.6 minutes to go through on um, one square kilometer. And um, let's say that. Uh, we can go uh, 50 kilometers an hour on a, um, a road. So let's say, oh, let's say one and a half uh, minutes to drive a kilometer. So, so you know, we, it all depends on road type and so on. But, but we'll just have something to work with. So our first step is to create these rasters. So we. Uh, and remember that we have this rasterize. So down somewhere in Gdale, there is a tool rasterize vector to raster. Basically, I'll just run this tool three times: once for the countries, once for the roads, once for the railroad. But let's start out running it. So I'll just say I want to run it on my. Uh, countries and main the right projection i do not have any field no i don't want to write a field i want to write in a fixed value so that's my walking distance so let's say that will be a 10. my units will be in graphic units there will be one kilometer by one kilometer 
it's, this doesn't take too long time to do the calculations. I'll make sure that my extent is the same as my countries. So that one. Uh, assign a specific node data. So let's set that would be to minus one, two, three, four, five, six. And do I want to set a preconditional value so where it's not uh, land? So that's basically in the C. So uh, let's write 200 where we have a C. Um, float, yeah, well, I want to have some decimal values later. So it, 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 yeah, I'll leave that as float. Good. I think that is all I need. So I can run this one. So basically, I have done this. And, um, so that's my first rasterize. And then this basically go back and change my parameters to my railroad. So where there's a railroad, I want to write 0 0.6 in my, where there's no railroad, I want to make sure that the number is high enough to not be chosen. So let's say one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's a high cost for, um, for if it's not a railroad, but I don't want to use no data because I want to add them together. No data often gives problems. Uh, so run that one on my railroad. And uh, then I want to run this layer. I want to run it on my roads also. And this time I'll say 1.5 minutes to go one kilometer. And basically the same. So run this one. So all of that resulted in, I now have three raster layers. So my, we just rename them. This one is my road. Road. This one is my rail. And this one is my land. So, I've got all of these, and um, that is then at, uh, at any given point, want to have the cheapest. So if it's a road, I, if, it's, if there's both a road and a rail, it will take the rail value. If there's both a road and a land, it will take the road land. So um, in order to do this, there is a... Um, a tool called R series. So R series from so it's a grass tool. And it's one of these local tools where we take a series of raster layers on top of it all and then do some calculation on it. So R series where I'll take and add all my rasters. And what I really want is I want to calculate the minimum value so the cheapest of them so what is the cheapest i can get through a given square that's the price i want to the time i want to use on it so i can change freely between walking and trains and whatever so um is that okay for that and um don't want anything else i think that's it I'll run my layer here. Good. And now I hopefully would have this layer which is um, aggregated. This one up here. So, um, and it's a uh, Bit difficult to see, but if I change the symbology of it, be a single band soda, unique values, 
and classify and yeah well let's see but that's fine so C and railroads and roads and um of course you know that could map them and it's always this thing about using um rat uh, decimal values that's a bit of an order let's say that so here i have my layer and just turn off those so we have my what we call a cost layer so i just rename this layer here to cost so this layer basically contains how much it costs to go through an individual cell now basically what i want to do is i want to find my way so where did i want to i want to go to prague over here um approximately and i want to calculate um the the price of getting there maybe no maybe i will do something else first maybe i should first do a service area so given that we can go by train and car and so on how, which capital is closest to a given location it's the same process but we'll just do it twice so um the tool that I'll be using um, is our cost tool. And it asks me what is my cost layer. And then I can give it a start and an end point. I can also give it a series of points. So I want to use my single part capitals there. I don't want any end points. And I just want it to run everywhere, so I guess it's fine. So I'll just run this tool. So once uh, it's finished doing calculation, it doesn't take so long. Um, we can see that we have it has done this um, allocation grid where we have our individual capitals and the service area. I think if we turn on the railroad network, it might be easier to understand how this. So anywhere within this blue area, which does strangely enough match rather much France, it's best to go to France. There's area that does strangely resemble quite a lot Spain. If you go to Spain, Portugal, um, Denmark has eaten something of Sweden. Well, that's reasonable enough um no sorry um so um it's um basically this is our allocation when we do the calculation on the raster layer um, in addition to our um, allocation map it has also calculated movement so which move which direction should we move in order to get to a specific location I mean, you can basically see that I can move on to each of these um, so these are my movement map the same as if you're doing modeling of water it's very much the same you have the accumulated cost which is a bit difficult to look at I am um, think if it's not uh, accumulated cost I just change its symbology a bit to go to uh, soda colors and flip them around and set it to a uh, minimum maximum calculated in the updatable canvas so it will optimize for so we can see of course it costs a lot of to get out into the water and we can see the grid around the, each town and the rail, main railroads and if i drag the roads up also we can see how this cost reflects both the railroad network and road network of course it takes the longest time to get to one of these so if i let's see if i have a capital somewhere so um why not go to Copenhagen? So in this um, layer here, 
we have our first to our nearest and if that's illuminated first so it will take me um, 38 minutes to get from here to the center of Copenhagen and um, well, if it, I have to go to Roskilde so from Roskilde to the center of Copenhagen it would take me 30 minutes so that's relatively correct so um but i can also do it instead of having each capsule just choose one point so let's say that we want to look at getting to prague from anywhere so in that case what i would do is that um I will go in and take do my uh, maybe I should get rid of all these layers first again. So my uh, distance, location, distance, and my accumulated cost. Get those three. Of course, the cost layer is still the same as before. So move my map. I've got Prague somewhere in the middle there, and I would like to do my R cost again. And this time, I'll again use my cost layer. I would set in a coordinate for my starting point. So I click there, and I'll click there. Don't want any stop points, and I guess all of this is as should be so run the tool and pause the video okay i was a bit hasty there um i had gotten to set these so remember i had to set all of these to null so when i set in my own point i have to get rid of those i don't know why it had chosen some default values there um but um so now it has one it has my cost layer and it has a start and that's what it needs to run so nothing else should be filled in so i'll just run it and pause the video because it takes some time Now that um, the process is finished, I will um, I can look at the results. And what we have here is that we have this cost getting to Prague direction layer. We have our accumulated cost. So again, this is being cost to get to Prague from anywhere. Um, again, I will just set it to be probably my updatable rasters, and I would say this is going to be a soda color, and all the way around. And okay, so um, We have I uh, change this thing. Ah, that's all good. And it so hopefully this will now hmm. Oh raster update so what a lot of things. So good at last. Um we have our price going from Prague and going out. You can see that, of course, it's expensive to get out into waters. 
and if I zoom in outside so I don't have any water layers, I get my cost price layer underneath here. You can see the prices change over here. So um, that's good. What I really want to do is I want to find out if I wanted to go from um, Stockholm. So I want to go from here down to Prague. Which way should I go? So once I have done done the calculation, I've done my cost R cost on the, um, this. I can use this R drain. What R drain does is that it takes. So my layer is my cost uh, accumulated cost. I want a movement direction. I um my input layer is a cost surface and um that's it. Ah, I have to say where I want to go from of course so just click on dot on go like that and I can run this too. So the result, if I look at my layers, is I hopefully have a drain path here. Which I'll just make uh, a uh, symbology uh, red and uh, oh, one good, and I'll just make it a bit bigger. So, so, so this is the route to take from Stockholm to Prague based on these calculations. So, um, the cost surface tool um, has advantages compared to the network that it can combine easily. So we have more cost quantity be between um, different um transportation methods if you wish um it can do many of the same things so we can do a allocation so a service area we can do um our shortest route all of these things that we would like to work with um can be done also in our cost layer so it's it's um relatively easy so basic you is that you um you calculate a raster layer for each price system so you have in my case i had land walk swim railroad nothing road nothing and then i found the cheapest of them added them up using the ah uh, you can see the tools i've used is that first i used all of the layers Calculate all the layers using the rasterize. And I use the R series to find the cheapest way of moving through each of my raster layers. So I did this one for each of my three different layers. Used R series to find the cheapest. I used R cost to find, calculate my cost layer, my accumulated cost. And finally, I use R drain. To find the way from the shortest path from a given location to another. So, relatively simple. Um, take some time, especially if you have big grids. But um, I hope you found this uh, video useful. And um, I hope to see you in another video. Bye.